Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petiti Garden Centers and today we are going to do a spotlight on milkweed. And if you've ever heard the name Asclepius, that is the botanical name for milkweed, so you might hear them kind of interchangeably. Well, milkweed's a really important plant in native Ohio environments and the reason being is it is the absolute number one host for monarch butterflies. So uh, particularly their larvae or caterpillar, um, they absolutely love milkweed. It is essential for their existence. And so therefore you should be growing it. And of course, in our spotlights, we always want to tell you how to be successful. And believe me, once you get these guys started, no problem. You'll have plenty of milkweed uh, to provide the monarch. So first of all, we always start with sun requirements. Uh, milkweed really does appreciate full sun conditions. So six or more hours of direct sunlight is really what it wants. It could be three in the morning and three in the afternoon or even more, and that's okay. No problems whatsoever. For soil, it's kind of interesting because between species, um, some of them can take a little bit more water than others, but what you're really looking for is a well-drained soil. Uh, obviously, in this area, we have clay soils, so amending the soil is what we often recommend. Um, so you can add anything from a Espoma soil perfecter to sweet peats to compost, all of those good things, planting mixes and the, all those types of things. These plants don't necessarily need good, rich soil, high in nutrients. So I'm gonna tell you it's a little bit tricky. So you want your soil to be well-drained, but they can be on the drier side and they can actually be slightly infertile. They don't really need all of the nutrients that we usually pack into soil uh, for our plants to grow well. So just keep that in mind. That kind of goes along with your native varieties of plants, um, natives to Ohio, they really don't need as much fertilization and care as maybe some of the other types of plant material. So just keep that in mind as well. This is a true perennial. I, did, I don't know if I mentioned that already, but honestly, very, very good long, lived perennial. So once you get them established in the garden, they really do continue to produce and grow for you. So uh, keep that in mind too. And a perennial is always usually three years in the garden or more coming back for you and enjoying year after year. Um, the other thing that we want to know about is, is water. And with these guys, just average water is fine. So that's one inch of water, one time per week deep and thorough watering, okay? If it does rain, you're just supplementing what we didn't get from the rainfall. So this past week we had about an inch of rain, or excuse me, half inch of rain. So you're gonna wanna supplement and irrigate for that other half inch, okay, um, before the week's out. Again, because these guys can take a little bit more dry uh, soils, you don't have to water as often. It's really not a problem. And I kind of think when you're growing these that you think about the ideal prairie environment. So drier, well-drained soils again, nobody can get out there and fertilize the prairie. So that's really what you're looking for. So I think raised areas would be really, really nice, full sun for them they'll really like that, okay? Now, as far as maintenance and attributes go, um, your milkweed will grow up. Right now, they're, they're obviously in the foliage phase and they'll grow up and they'll produce humble flowers. So that's a cluster of flowers, okay, that are all just their own powerhouses of nectar and pollen. With these plants, you really don't have to do a lot of maintenance. They'll just go through their bloom cycles. If you can deadhead after a, a bloom is finished blooming, no problem, go ahead and deadhead and you will notice side shoots forming in that area. So they're, they're quite prolific as far as blooming is concerned. And you really don't have to get out and deadhead every day. You can just go out every once in a while, maybe once a week or once every other week and just go through and deadhead those spent flowers. The other thing that you'll notice with these guys is that they do have a milky sap usually, hence the name milkweed. So that can be a little bit of an irritant skin irritant so if you want to use gloves when you're handling this plant that's usually a good thing okay attribute wise 
You also need to know that milkweed is really good as far as um, not being attractive to larger wildlife. So the deer, the bunnies, all of those guys, they really kind of stay away. And again, it's because of the toxicity of their milky sap, okay? It also has to do with some fuzzy foliage and things as well. I will tell you that their sap contains what they call cardiac glycosides. And um, as other insects come to this plant, they actually can't tolerate it but obviously the monarch butterfly and other insects can. So you will see that there's kind of that, that uh, cooperative relationship between the monarchs, of course, and the milkweed. And as they ingest that and they're able to tolerate it, that makes them, the caterpillars, um, unpalatable to other animals, okay? So lots of times when a monarch caterpillar gets eaten by, let's say, a bird, they tend to spit it out because they are filled, their system is filled with milkweed. So again, really cool kind of um, scientific, you know, relationship there. With the milkweed, also with maintenance, if you're trying to move it or divide it from its root system, they have this really long tap root. So you kind of have to dig if you're going to divide, you need to dig kind of, let's say six inches out away from the crown of the plant and then go straight down and then slowly kind of curve your digging motion towards the center of that root ball. You wanna try to remove that entire tap root so you can move the entire plant. So it's a little bit tricky once they get established to really dig and transplant them, okay? And I should mention with especially common milkweed, this guy, they are a big plant and they also have fairly active root systems, I should say, They're, they send their rhizomes out. So if you give them a space, they will start to fill in the space. Just so you're aware, if you kind of restrict their growth, no problem, they'll stay in that area. And I know some growers that really do just leave them in pots where they're kind of kind of stay where they were put in the garden and not spread out. But they, they are aggressive, I do wanna tell you that. So these guys can be fairly aggressive out in the landscape, but in this case, attracting monarchs, it's a good thing, okay, out there in the garden. The other thing is when you do plant them, they really do best if they're towards the edge of the beds. So some of these can get tall, don't get me wrong. So back edge and some of the shorter varieties you can put in the front edge, but the edges, it seems that when you plant milkweed at the edges, it's always going to be easier for your butterflies to find and encounter. And especially if you have a nice, clean, mulched border around them, that's where they can find them the best. So studies have shown that they really are able to find kind of isolated milkweed think when they're not planted among all these other different perennials and shrubs and trees and so forth they really like a nice bunch right out with a mulch border and that's great they'll come by the droves okay um the other thing that you can do is you can propagate milkweed by seeds so they're always going to produce those seed pods at the end of the season you can of course sow those seeds in i usually say early fall go ahead and sow them in the ground right at that time hopefully you'll get some good small milkweed established before winter and then of course that next season they should bloom for you no problem you can actually grow them from cuttings as well. So you can take maybe a two node cutting, maybe three nodes, so three or four inches, and you can go ahead and you can actually root that uh, node or that cutting, if you will, and that would work out fine. You can also take cuttings of their root system and actually grow Asclepias from that root cutting as well. So there's lots of different ways to try. Is one better than the other? Not necessarily. I, I always say experiment with whatever works for you and just keep on doing it, okay? Now, is milkweed only for monarch butterflies? Absolutely not. 
These plants are very, very high in nectar. So you are going to get bees, great, okay? So lots of different bees, bumblebees, carpenter bees, sweat bees, leaf cutter bees, no problem. You'll see them on milkweed. You will also see moths. You will also see seraphid flies, which are the ones that kind of mimic bees. You will see lots of other different types of butterflies, swallowtails, coppers, red admirals, um, skippers. There's, there's a lot out there. So other pollinators really do enjoy this plant and this plant really supports them very nicely. In Ohio, we have 13 native varieties of milkweed. The top three that you'll usually see readily available are going to be common milkweed. So this one here is actually called Asclepius syriaca. And syriaca has a larger leaf, as you can tell, nice and bright green. The underside is fuzzy, okay? And when it blooms, it will grow up, and this one's a tall one. So this one's gonna grow up anywhere from like four to six foot tall in the landscape, okay? And it'll produce those pinky, mauvey umbels of flowers. Very, very showy, very, very pretty. This is the one that you wanna put kind of in the back border, if you will, or the back edge of the garden. So again, the butterflies can see it, come to it, and it would be at the edge again with a little bit of a mulch border so they can go right to it. The other one that I have and can show you today is actually sometimes called butterfly weed. This one is Asclepius tuberosa. This is gonna be the shorty of the three that you commonly see available out there. Asclepius tuberosa really only grows about 18 to 36 inches. And you can tell the foliage is very, very different. Uh, much more uh, smaller foliage here, mounding habit, no problem. And this is the one that produces those bright orange to yellow flowers, okay? We do have one that's called gay butterflies. Oh no, hello yellow, sorry. That is more of that yellow or golden tones, if you will, a little bit of orange. This one is all orange, okay? With a little bit of a yellow eye in it. You will also see that there's a third type of milkweed called swamp milkweed, and that's called Asclepius incarnata. The variety we grow is called Cinderella, and she's a beautiful pink, kind of rosy pink milkweed. This milkweed is the one that is most tolerant of wet to moist conditions. So you do have that type of condition it will do very, very well. And you'll see it growing by ponds and riverbanks and those types of places, again, in full sun. This plant can also tolerate those drier conditions as well. So just be aware it can grow in both places, about three foot tall, really, really easy and beautiful. And that kind of reminds me that your, your milkweeds are very, very slow to emerge in the landscape, kind of like your, tro or, excuse me, your perennial hibiscus, where you're, you're waiting for them, you're waiting for them to come up and then you think you lost them. And then the next thing you know, you're not really sure what you have. Have. So just be aware, this plant especially, mark or tag in the garden so you remember where you planted it because, like I said, it's pretty darn slow coming up. Okay. With these, I will tell you, you always have success if you do plant other native perennials with your milkweed, okay? So things like Joe Pie Weed is another high nectar, really good native plant for us. Um, Liatris or Blazing Star or Gay Feather, it's got all different names. It usually comes in white and kind of a lavender violet. Those are really, really great natives for butterfly attracting as well. Always talk about the daisy family. And again, you can't go wrong if you're planting asters. It could be any color of asters or coneflower. Absolutely, any of the single coneflowers are always gonna be best or something like Coreopsis. And again, your Coreopsis, there are so many wonderful varieties and they're long blooming and great again for attracting the butterflies. And I should say just general pollinators, but all again, natives or native are, so that's cultivated variety of natives, native plants, and they work really, really well to attract again, your butterflies in the area. 
again, if you want to attract monarchs, you have to grow milkweed. So monarchs, what's really interesting, again, is that your milkweed is absolute number one host plant for them. And we'll say when you're attracting butterflies, we often talk about the host where they lay their eggs, the larvae eats and develops right there on the plant. And then of course they will create their chrysalis or pupa right there on the plant as well and then emerge. So the whole cycle really happens on both the, the milkweed and the, the butterfly weed, okay? They're both, again, same family, great plants. What you need to know is that that monarch life cycle usually takes about four to five weeks for them to go from egg to adult. So usually about five days where you'll find that the eggs will usually be attached on the bottom side of the leaf. So you kind of have to look and see if you have any eggs underneath. And then after about five days, you start to see the larvae develop. Now, they usually grow for about 10 to 14 days and they go through five instars, which means they get bigger and bigger and bigger and they kind of shed their outer coat and keep on growing. So they are hungry critters and you'll see lots of holes and you know chew marks through your milkweed. And then after that, they'll actually produce that chrysalis or their cocoon, of course. And then inside, they'll start developing. And really, it takes another like two weeks for that to happen, okay? And then afterwards, you'll see that adult butterfly emerge. And um, again, probably about a four to five week process. So just, just be aware, you've got to check your milkweeds, check the undersides, check the stems for the caterpillars, of course. Um, obviously leave them on there, let them do their thing. And then after that, you'll start to see them develop and continue to grow and we enjoy watching them. Other than that, guys, you just make sure you need sun. I forgot to mention fertilizer, but I mentioned they don't really like fertile soils. So if you want to throw a little bit of uh, plant tone on them, maybe once a year, maybe twice a year, that's fine. Not, not a big deal. But again, if you forget to fertilize milkweed, no problem whatsoever. They really can do very, very well for you. Okay. Um, that's all about milkweed. Enjoy. Enjoy.